hi guys welcome back to my channel today we have a very special guest we have two of Accra's finest most influential influencers <laughs> okay so we have debbie to my left and we have a four to my right hi we're going to be having like a very honest conversation about content creating in lagos and in accra as well we have our producer behind the scenes who is going to just direct the whole thing and ask us questions and we're going to answer as truthfully as we can so i hope you guys enjoy it and if you are watching to this point do not forget to do the needful subscribe comment like just engage with this video it will mean a lot to me and us yes yeah, so we'll just get right into it okay so just a little bit of an insight to both their careers we're just gonna start by asking how long have you both been creating content slash influencing for i think i started like 2015 but seriously 2017 because 2015 2017 i'm still trying to like figure things out but i started seriously 2017 like this is what i'm doing and this is what i'm going for for me i started seriously as well in 2015 the summer of 2015 so that's six years and that's four years mm -hmm. yeah well, me, I think I just started seriously this year. You came in at a perfect time. I mean, <laughs> because honestly, because sure. I, I keep saying this, like, if we kind of paved the way for most of us in Ghana, so it's like, okay, do this, do that, and she'll be like, no, don't do this because this won't happen. So you say that you're so, like, I'm near of She said <laughs> No, for me, because like you, you see the things that she was doing, and then you just learn and yeah. know, okay, maybe this is what I want to do, yeah. and so on and so forth. But the time we started, it wasn't paying as much as now, so that's why I'm like, you came in yeah. at, okay, a, okay, at a perfect time. I feel so. like 2021 has been the year of influencers. Like, influencers are making so much money, not only in Nigeria, but like across the yeah. world. Because so COVID yeah, made exactly. a lot of brands wake up. Yeah. Because we've been trying to tell them that, oh, use influencers and like oh no but then when we were all like locked like locked uh -huh. in the house mm -hmm. that's when you got to see who's good and who's not so there was a lot of yeah. it was like a filtering process for us yeah. to see the noise makers and then yeah. the ones that actually <laughs> have substance <laughs> i think brands are beginning to understand that you need a real digital marketing plan mm -hmm. and that includes influencers whether you like it or not yeah um social media um technology i mean this is the new wave of marketing you're no longer right. just using radio um or tv commercials and stuff like that and so like she said it's a good time for you so welcome yeah so would you say that would you identify yourself as a pioneer would you say that would you own it i mean i think as i was beginning i i didn't realize what i was doing i might have started following one or two influences in the united states and i thought Hey, you know, I also want to share my outfits. I was working as a stylist and which you still do. Yeah, <laughs> which I still do. Mm -hmm. And I was realizing that the consumer and the producer weren't being connected very well. Mm -hmm. And so I just decided to start wearing outfits and posting them on Instagram as much as I could. And then it just sort of took off from there. So I wasn't necessarily aware of what I was doing. doing. Mm -hmm. So but I am I'm, I'm glad that I mean you can say that I yeah. helped you yeah. probably understand, understand better. The, market. the market better or see like another avenue for um, getting paid. And yeah. Okay. Would you guys be open to you know the people watching who want to be influencers or content creators? Would you guys be open to do like master classes and stuff to just you know help? I think we help us personally. I don't, I don't see myself there yet, mm -hmm. but I have to also stop saying that because there are people that look up to you. Mm -hmm. So if you keep saying that, it's almost like you're bringing the yeah. other person down. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I want to do a master class yet. I think some people just want to be influencers because it's like this person is making yeah. this money. If you're not passionate about something, like if I don't have any business doing something i will not go there i think that people need to be careful when they ask other influencers for help, for help mm -hmm. or a master class um there's certain ways they can help and there's certain ways that they are they can't be helpful because 
being an influencer is very individualistic to everyone. Everyone mm -hmm. needs to come with a story, mm -hmm. um, with a narration. Who are you? Um, what are you telling us about? What are you focusing on? Is it beauty? Is it style? Is it architecture? Is it, is it comic books? And then you need to just stay authentic to yourself. That's something that me, Angel, or Debbie cannot teach you. What can be taught are uh, like um, editing skills, editing skills, maybe how to maneuver through businesses, how to yeah. approach uh, companies, mm -hmm. how to schedule your posts, that sort of thing. Like the like the mechanics of it can be taught, but then when it, it comes all depends to, on you. When it comes yeah. to your personal contribution, that really has to come from you. So that's what I think. Okay. So we're going to hand it like the questions over to our producer <laughs> behind the camera to just. Give us some action. Throw it at us. Uh, yes, I'm um, just speaking off um, from what Ifoya was just talking about, about being individualistic. And I was hoping if you guys could talk about um, self identity in the time of digital influencers. If I were to answer that question, I would say, for example, when I first started YouTube, I was one of the YouTube babies from COVID, you know, right? But when you watch lots of YouTube videos about starting your first YouTube channel and all of that, they tell you, find your niche, find your niche. And I'm just thinking like, what's my niche? Like, what's, <laughs> like, what's my niche? What's my niche? You know, um, I only feel like it's just this year, the last month that I have found what I want to create. And I was telling you guys about it because it's like most people who follow me on Instagram or subscribe to me want to see like lifestyle content you know? but me as a person how many times do I go out like back to back to feed? Here. exactly or when, I, like, or when I have like an event I have to show up for but Angel as a person I'm such a home body you know so I started thinking how do I make content out of stuff that I actually like to do and I realized that the things that I consume are like fitness, wellness, health oriented food you know changing my diet like not like diet culture but like trying to live a healthier life um so now i feel like i have found my niche so that way i found what i like what i want to do but also maintaining myself does it make sense i think we all have to be very sensitive to the fact that there are different kinds of people who are viewing our content so they're so, younger uh -huh. they're younger kids um or even women our age and who are looking at us and probably seeing us as quite perfect, but they don't realize that there's a lot of makeup, there's editing, there's a cameraman, there's like three different lights pointing at us and that's all contributing to the finished product. And so I, you know, I, try, I try to balance it out. You know, there are times where you get high editorial and there are times where it'll be like an iPhone and not a lot of makeup on because just to, just to let everyone know that it's okay to be real, it's okay to, have blemishes from acne it's okay to not have the longest weave or like the longest hair it's just okay to be whoever you are i don't know if anyone any of you have experienced it but like body shaming and stuff from the audience oh no really. no for, well for me i'm <laughs> i'm a no nonsense type of influencer <laughs> So sometimes people ask, like, do people send you? I said, nobody dare send me that because one thing that I've noticed with people is I've been bullied a lot. So it took a while for me to like get my confidence back. But when I got it, you can't play, you can't play with me. So I think people don't, people are afraid to send certain things my way because apparently I don't smile a lot. So when oh, people so actually, sweet. when people get to hang out with me, every time like. Oh my god, you are so fun. I didn't think you were like that because I will not give you the chance mm -hmm. to misbehave because mm -hmm. people take advantage of like it's almost as if people ask like influencers are nothing. Yeah. 100%. Like we are for you. You can yeah. do whatever you want to do. But I always say it's how you project yourself to people that will make them respect you or bring certain things your way. So I'm the no nonsense person. Yes, I'll teach you. Yes, I'll have fun with you. But if you cross the line, I'll check you. Yeah. So as long as you draw that line and i'm very happy that my followers know that because i never yeah. get any negative um yeah. messages like that because i i used to have like really bad acne you they can't message me and say it yeah. you probably say it behind my back because if you come at me i have a sharp mouth you better make sure everything on your body is right because i will Ooh. come at you I don't think I've experienced that, to be honest. If have you dealt with any people sending you? Yeah, quite, I mean, quite a bit. There was a point, I think when I hit 29 to 30, I suddenly put on a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And there was one image 
don't even know how I passed that image to post. But there was one image, and now when I go back and look at it, I will, I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> there's one image where I there there's quite a there's, there's a quite a rounding to my tummy, and so kind of rounding. Your stomach was big. Do you get? So and I guess I hadn't I didn't realize that was what was happening to my body. So I guess I didn't even check myself. But then. I had a lot of messages, oh my god, you're pregnant, and like a lot oh, of no! were, yeah, a lot of people were commenting underneath. Congrats. And to be, <laughs> to be honest, to be honest, and what's still quite funny is that there were more men than women passing those comments. Mm. And second of all, the women who were passing those comments, first of all, we know about bloating. So yeah. come on. The, some of the women that we see like E. This person, yeah. they are fighting with like ten thousand insecurities, 100%. and they try to project it on influencers. For instance, like people that are doing their bodies now, there are so many women that I know that always act like, "Hey, these slay queens, blah 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 blah." But now all of them have bodies, and they want to act like they are in the gym. <laughs> Like they're in the gym, yeah. so I feel like that's what that's what they do to mm -hmm. us influencers. They always because they know you're pretty, they know you're nice, they know you're confident. That's why you're showing whatever it is that 100%. you want to show, yeah. and it's like they're trying to bring, bring their insecurities on you. Like, oh, she's not even that pretty. You are looking for a reason to feel yeah. better about yourself. Sorry, dear, not here. I'll check you. <laughs> getting used to it because apparently i have the weirdest look when somebody says oh my god i follow you i'm just like okay it's just i think because i still see myself like oh i'm a girl's girl so when yeah. they start doing all that i'm like oh it's not that deep like yeah. let's take a selfie let's do this i'm still honestly i'm still trying to get used to i think i'm the, the same, same thing i think i'm the same way as well because i had a similar experience a couple of weeks back and i was just like oh my god so nice <laughs> 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 She's like, oh, let's take a picture. I'm like, oh, okay. She can I hold your waist? I'm like, of course she can hold my waist. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, so that. I think, well, personally, I think people don't realize what I do is work. Like, I'm styling you. Yes, I'm talking about clothes and makeup and beauty and all that stuff, but it's work. Mm -hmm. So if I'm at a party and then you come up to you like, oh my god, it's what I'm wearing, okay, what should I do? Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm wearing this next week. What do you think? Like, you're now asking me to stop enjoying myself and switch mm, up and work. Like, if you're at a party, I'm not going to now bring you a contract. Write it for me right now. Or like, please, balance That's the, sheet, balance the sheet for me. Like, no, yeah. we're not going to do that because I understand that you're at a party or some social event. So what is appreciated is a DM, an email, um or if you see me oh please can i have your card or can i have your number i would like to reach out to you maybe later on to ask your advice on this or to hire you or something like that that always works if we are at an event where we're networking we're like at a panel event like that's somewhere you know we can still talk about work and touch base and that kind of thing so just be sensitive to the environment the environment yeah, yeah. i agree with her because i've yeah, also I'm been in situations where people are like Oh, this stuff I'm wearing. So what can we do about it? <laughs> like, oh, can you DIY something? Sometimes I don't want to do the top the ball first of all. <laughs> Angel will be best since <laughs> Nigeria. You will struggle with power. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, to pick off of that, <laughs> hey Debbie, enough. To pick up on that, when an, when any brand approaches you, the first thing that you have to think about is does does the product or does the service speak to my lifestyle? Um, uh, am I going to use it? Um, so for for the generator one, I would say that. <laughs> Right now, in my estate, I don't have need for generator, okay. but I know um, that it will be beneficial for my audience. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I'm definitely willing to take on. I wouldn't. I know what people come on my page for. Mm. If I post something that they don't care about, nobody will mind me. Like, we come to you because we want this. Generator, they're fine, okay? English. <laughs> Translate it. Like, what has generator got to do with us? We don't come on your I, page. I guess that for makes that. I, I guess that makes sense. So because now I'm thinking, how would I be able to market it if I'm not if you're doing fitness? What you say? I'm running. So, but if it comes to oh, okay, you guys can get a special discount if you 
you know, do this or blah, 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 blah. I don't, I'll do you one better. So mm -hmm. you have Instagram mm -hmm. and then you have YouTube, mm -hmm. you have Facebook. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for example, in your stories or in your YouTube videos mm -hmm. where you're talking about your lifestyle, you're on the move, blah, 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 that's where the generator could probably fit in. Mm -hmm. But not as a like, post mm -hmm. on, on your Instagram, Instagram page. That would yeah. look awkward. Oh, you yeah, probably have to tell a story. Because, because I use some of my brands. <laughs> yes, like some of the things that are not... Let's say if something is not really my style, but I'm trying to fuse it in, I'll just start talking about it in my stories. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, we're doing this mm -hmm. for like two weeks. And if the brand understands, like, I need to start acting like... So let's say January, so I'll probably be like, oh, I'm trying to film. I just got light off mm -hmm. or whatever it is. So I have to do that for like three, four weeks for my followers to know that Debbie has been struggling with lights because she's trying to film and then i'll be like oh guys guess what as i was struggling mm. some generator company just saw it they're like e they're going to give us this so this and this it, that is and more intentional. natural intentional you have to be intentional yeah. i think it's very important as an influencer as a content creator that you listen to your audience because i was doing makeup but before i started doing makeup i started doing makeup because everybody liked seeing makeup on okay. me so as time went on i realized that a lot of people like to see what the full look looks on me mm. because i'm not um, i'm not someone that'll just do makeup and then my outfit looks some way i'm about the whole shebang mm. do you get it my hair has to look nice my makeup needs to look nice my outfit needs to look nice so i realized that lots of people were coming to my page for that mm -hmm. so i needed to give them that especially when that's like what i'm passionate about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that that's what helped me to stay authentic like now i know what's supposed i know what my um followers relate to and even like because i pay attention to that i feel like i grow with them it's just like marketing like when you're bringing a new product you need to understand what the people want and you always need to make sure that you're helping the next person so they always trust you and come back to you i think as any human being the person that you are today at 24 you're not going to be the same person at 26 and not the same person at 30 mm -hmm. and so you will be growing over the years and I think what helps your audience grow with you, which I probably need to do a lot more of, is to really share your experience, share your story, share the things that are going on, and that's how they're going to grow with you. Mm. Um, as opposed to just showing up one day like this, and then the next day you're like that. However, I do have a couple of influencers who I maybe followed when I was 24, and now they're not giving me the same kind of content that yeah. I started with them with. And so I've had to unfollow because it doesn't work for me anymore. So that happens and mm. it's okay. It's really okay. But yeah, just be true to who you are. Like communicate, <coughs> communicate that, um, share your experiences and you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. You know? I feel like it's something that I struggled with because when I, when I decided to move from Instagram to YouTube, Instagram is just all smoke and mirrors, right? You just post your picture and you go. Mm. But with YouTube, you have to document, oh, okay, I have, all this acne in my face right now like i went to do a chemical peel it broke my face like um i struggled with that because i was so nervous of about like what kind of content to share or people make fun or people say this but now i'm just like learning that i also have to just document it so i can go back and watch and ah okay angel you've come such a long mm -hmm. way from how you started and they that have been subscribed or followed to me can also like tell that oh, okay this has been the trajectory so i agree with that I can only talk based on life experiences because nothing, I don't think anything good will last forever. Hmm. So whenever something good comes into my life, I just try as much as possible to maximize it and move mm -hmm. on from there. So if any bad thing happens, I'm like, I'm secure. Just like how you get insurance. Yeah. Like, so me, mine is to make sure I survive. I don't post as often as I used to because now I've made businesses out of that. And so many women come to me like they're buying from my website or they're calling me to style them or they're calling me to do makeup for them or they're calling me to help with their personal brands and all this is outside of Instagram. I talk to them, email and so on. So I know that if that ends, I still have like this thing. So that's what I say, whatever it is that you do, what are you getting out of it? I think for me, I'm, that's why I'm branching into YouTube because I don't, I haven't 
um shaped my life in the way that you have that if instagram yeah, crashes exactly so that's what i'm trying to build a brand outside like instagram if anything happens i still have my degree i'll go i work in it <laughs> which is always very important. you know as much as we're not trying to always think of the worst we uh -huh. still want to be prepared we're not yeah. trying mm -hmm. to be stuck or be be too comfortable you always have to be reinventing moving exactly. on what's the next product what's the next this what's the uh -huh. next move and um just spreading your wings and i think yeah. as you're working in the industry if you're really paying attention you get to see where the next um 100 the next avenues for trying to find for revenue will, will come from mm -hmm. so just paying attention to that and working your way through well which yeah. um a little thing that i want to add to it is what I've come to realize with influencer marketing or whatever it is, is when you have a cult following, even when you tell them I'm selling a comb, they'll mm. jump on it. <laughs> yeah. So it's very important that you have that connection with your audience. Your audience. Mm -hmm. If you don't and you're just doing things because this is a hit, so let me jump on it. That is a hit. I mean, TikTok is good, but I'm happy I did not jump on it to just be jumping yeah. and changing outfits because every like everybody is doing it because you can <laughs> It took me a moment. I was like, what? <laughs> no, like you can easily lose yourself if you're yeah. trying to follow trends. Yeah, right? Like you need mm -hmm. to understand. Like people yeah. come to me for this. Maybe it's not to you. It's yeah. not. It's not to somebody. It's not big enough. But you have your people that. Yeah. And it was through. It was when I started selling my DIY dresses that I realized that oh, I'm not doing these new things. I don't spin around them. My outfit changes. But for some reason. Like yourself. I've made a lot of sale out of it. So you know when you have a call from the people believe in you, they come to you for everything. When you tell them we're doing this, they'll jump on it. So you should your main concern as an influencer should be the consumer. Mm. I think generally I'm just a private person, so I just don't share certain private parts of my life. Even bringing my mom on initially was a bit shaky for me but then I got, I got comfortable after a while but just understanding that some things don't always last forever yeah. which includes romantic relationships and so once you share it it's like then it's in the world it's out yeah. there forever and so when you break up you now have to come and explain to everyone eh? when you were enjoying your vacation now that you're broken up come and tell us what happened yeah. tell yeah. us yeah. I've, had, I've, had, I've, had, I've had my fair share of that because i put my relationship and so many things on and mm -hmm. it was when it went down that i realized that no i don't have the heart for it because it's like yeah. you're showing us that you're in love you're showing us this yeah. moving on i just realized that i don't have the heart i don't have the capacity to take all that in so i'd mm -hmm. rather not and it's easier for me so when somebody comes in my life and they leave it's easier because mm -hmm. i don't owe anybody any explanation for me <laughs> i don't think that i care much um because i don't it's not that i have a tough heart or anything but i think that if i am at a point where i want to share i share and i just yeah like forget there are some people it. that share and they're having a good old time but i'm yeah. just saying I went but I mean like I mean, I mean like in terms of that's... relationship because I've been in a relationship where I was I wouldn't say actively posting my partner but when we like broke up I was just like okay I don't really owe anything any, anybody mm -hmm. anything and I didn't speak about it and that's just a dead and buried if if I have a boyfriend who can do all that is a plus but at the same time when I'm with my partner i want to enjoy the moment i don't expect him to do it but, but if I do, it's something he wants i do to need do. him to sort of understand, understand that this is my life and so once or twice it will you know happen. Yeah. it will happen like if we yeah. happen to go somewhere for the first time and i'm like oh my god the light is perfect i beg you just <laughs> Yeah, and then you should be able to know. No, your I mean, I try, I try not to do that because you should be able to know if actually, I'm, no, I'm the type that, that if you no. score my picture, I'll be very angry. It will ruin my night, so I will not put you in that situation. Yeah. But what so if you're both time. like on a work trip and you require him to take pictures of you? Well, that's why I have my tripod. Well, that's why you learn. Like, there's a conversation that needs to happen before the trip. No, I time. feel like even as an influencer, you need to learn how to do certain things yourself. Do you get so you don't burden somebody else? 
if it's before I go on a trip and I know it's work, I would have planned like, okay, let me see if I can reach out to a photographer and, and, and that side. Okay. If not, no. am I going to use my tripod? If not, I, I find a different I, angle. I agree, but look at it this way. For example, like, let's say your husband writes, is a public speaker and has to mm -hmm. write speeches. Aren't you reading his speeches for him? Aren't you double checking his spelling? Aren't you? <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, okay, okay what, what, what else can I do? Like, let's say there are certain times where we will also have to help, help. our significant yeah. others with mm -hmm. whatever job that they're, that they're working on. If he's writing an essay and you guys are home yeah. on a Saturday, you are reading this document for him. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying at the end of the time. day, I feel like it also depends on the kind of person you are. Mm -hmm. I know I'll flip. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So I try not to put the person in that, in that position. Because yeah. then when you also do that, it's like, hmm, I don't really like the picture. You think you're just saying you don't like the picture, but you're also hurting him. I don't like putting people in positions where I want them to help me and they can't help me. And then they feel like, oh God, this is, I need to help my girl. Or I need to help her. And, and I can't, so I will not put you in that position. So I will plan ahead. <clears throat> if it's not something that I can do, I'll take a different angle. Yeah. Then I'm like, okay, it's going to be like a selfie, selfie trip yeah. that yeah. I'll put together, edit, put text in, and let it look nice. And I'll post at the end of the day because I'm a content creator. Okay. So you just have to think ahead. Okay, well, that makes sense. <laughs> and that leads me to my, like, I don't know if this is the last question, <laughs> but that leads me to this question, man. Right? What tips would you give to, like, you know, content creators or upcoming content creators right now one thing that i'll say is just being authentic like know what you want and even if it's small because some people can have 100k followers but they don't impact as much as someone with 2,000 followers 100%. that's what you need to understand as a content creator you should always see what your value is what your value is or what your followers like or what they come to you for if you don't have that and you're and people can tell when you're fake yeah, yeah so if you like hair and yours is supposed to be just hair just stick to it and find ways that you can improve on the hairstyles mm -hmm. if it's fitness different ways that you can improve there's nothing wrong with showing that hey today my stomach is big old, or tomorrow you were able to just be yourself, just be yourself. like just pick one and then kill yourself in it um <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, anyone can be an influencer. We all have Instagram pages. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could, anyone can share their outfits or what they're eating today and stuff like that. But to really take it seriously, make sure you have a story. What are you coming as? If you're going to talk about interior decoration, what is that angle? What are you going to be sharing? Are you sharing um, the work that you do or are you shopping with us? Like, just be very um, accurate, dead on with your story and then just flow with it and then the rest will happen and pray a lot um pray a lot yeah also if you are coming into this for the money sorry <laughs> no not not that you will not get work and you will not get paid what i'm saying is that if you're coming in this solely because you want to make money i think that's the worst that's the worst agenda, um, agenda that you can have because it won't be coming from your heart it yeah. won't be authentic you are going to end up you just be frustrated doing any and everything there are, there are so many times where work is down um the brands are you know being <laughs> some way some way and so it really has to come from your heart you really want to interact and share your life with an audience so just be you be real and the money will come to you i think because we we're in africa and we see a lot of black women when you ask me that question, it's hard for me to answer because black black is all I've seen my whole life. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say that black is beautiful. I know it sounds very cliche, but black women are actually very, very, very beautiful. I love the color of my skin. I mean, it's complicated for me, and I I have I, I agree a little bit with you. Like I I've always like there's been nothing to compare it to. Like we're all black, um, but personally for me, being mixed race, it's it's people have never like they don't they, they don't think i'm Ghanaian, and the lebanese don't think i'm lebanese so it's mm -hmm. i've always been in this weird awkward middle space all my life and it's as an adult where i'm coming to a space where it's like yes i might be awkward i might be different but i love it like <laughs> I love it and if you can't place me well that's where i am i'm unplaceable <laughs> you know but um i think we're really special we're really magical we have a lot going for us and the world well maybe other parts of the world has 
spent a great deal of time mm -hmm. trying to make us, us on this than. continent feel less than. Um, and I just hope that all women can come to that point where we're like, you know what? We're the shit. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Okay guys, so it's been such a beautiful, enlightening video. Oh my gosh. Ah, the wisdom. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you, I don't know, just learned a thing or two from Ifwa and Debbie. And I'm going to miss them so much. I know. I miss you too. I'm going to miss them so much. I hope making this video. And if you did, if you enjoyed watching it, please do not forget to subscribe like comment share and just engage with this video share it with anyone who you think would benefit from it and i'll see you in my next video bye, bye. bye.